Good morning guys, good morning everyone. Hi, hello, my name is EJ and I'm back again with another narrated our time lapse video. Uh yeah, today we're gonna be taking a look at a photo study that I did a while back. This was done in 2018. Um so yeah, it was a while back. Um but yeah, I'm using Photo Crunch or Photo Crunch <laughs> Map Crunch to generate a photo that I could do a photo study from. Um, it's a great website for artists, you know? Uh, great way to just find an interesting location just to do an environment study on. Um, so yeah, I, I ran into the website because um, I was in a video chat with two people from conceptart.org at one point in time, um, Anton and Zach, really great artists. I uh, do check out their work. Um, I'll provide links to their uh, Instagrams and social medias in the description below, but a really good artist. And um, yeah, we, ha we were hanging out and they were the ones who introduced me to MapCrunch. And I thought it's such a great tool. Like, I, you know, I knew Google Streets existed and whatnot, but, you know, with Google Streets, you kind of have to like browse and browse forever to find any interesting locations. Well, MapCrunch kind of just gives it for you. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, really interesting. Um, but, anyways, uh, so yeah, uh, there was this point in time, sometime in. <laughs> in 2018 where you know I, I didn't feel like working on my projects i wanted to take a break from my projects and i just wanted to do a, just some simple artwork for a warm-up you know uh and i decided to do map crunch and this is where we're at we're just at map crunch you know i the very first photo that came up was uh a countryside in Italy. That's what we're looking at. This is in Italy, somewhere in Italy. Um, if I zoom in enough, I, I, I could figure out what the name is written on the video, but I'm not going to. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah. Now this image, uh, this illustration is just very, very interesting because originally all I wanted to do was just a little warm up artwork. You know, I just wanted to do a simple photo study but at the very end of it it ended up becoming something else you know and so this you know i don't really think like this illustration is all that great like it's i don't really think it's all that awesome compared to some of my speed paints but it's that little thing that i added at the very end of this session that i was just like huh maybe i should make a video out of this even though this is not one of my favorite illustrations but anyways obviously at the very beginning of the video i showed the final product and in the final product we have a slender man looking character in the image which i did not intend to do <laughs> so yeah i it, this was just supposed to be a simple photo study but um Anyways, the reason why Slenderman ended up being in the picture was because I have a tendency for narratives. Like, I just really love narrative illustrations. You know, where people take a look at it and you could read a story or glean a story or kind of denote a story just based on the image, you know? And so... Yeah, I initially, like at the very, very end of it, you'll see that I added Slenderman probably like the last five minutes of the of this session. This is a 30-minute session, and this is real time, by the way. So this is really interesting, too, um, because I don't typically do fast photo studies. Most of my photo studies are about an hour to two hours of work. So for me to have done it in 30 minutes, which is very, very cool. But yeah, I didn't add Slenderman until like the last five minutes or so. And so the whole dimension of the painting just like totally changed. And what I mean by that is that, you know, originally, like if you look at the original photo, there's a fog in the original photo, right? And there's kind of like this pinkish, brownish, orangey house uh, with an orange tree it's not really an orange tree but i think it's like autumn or something and so the leaves are like browning and you know like slowly falling and so there's kind of like 
a semi brownish orange hue that's you know obfuscated by the fog and when i was like making my uh speed paints like i put like a brownish hue where that area is just to kind of um oh hi conceptart.org what's going on what what am i doing in this website okay uh yeah sure okay i don't know why i pulled that website up i guess i wanted some information i don't know what's going on there but yeah what am i doing dude just get back to artwork all right there you go <laughs> okay that's that was yeah okay that was hilarious i didn't expect that to happen all right cool um totally forgot that that was there but i should have edited that out but i didn't it's all good we're moving on anyways um so uh yeah um anyways i'll talk about the little brownish hue uh, a little later on i guess what's important right now is you know i could just start talking about the process um because this process is totally different from what i do now process wise so this is immensely interesting um but anyways at the very beginning of of the video what i did was i took a copy of the photo and blurred it out which is what you're seeing on the right right now you see like this hazy image and i always do this just so that i'm not starting out with a blank canvas just so that I have a little bit of color. Uh, some purists would prefer that, you know, and when you do your photo studies, start out with a blank, blank canvas. I, on the other hand, just throw in some color. You know, I mean, I could have started with white and then I'll probably just throw in a bunch of color anyways. Um, but just to start things out, I might as well just blur the image and just start with something versus nothing. And then what I'm doing now is that I'm slowly carving out shapes um, in my illustration. So I started with the green to denote the shape of the tree at the foreground, you know, because that's pretty much um, apparent and, you know, huge and big and it's in the foreground. So it's like a focal point of sorts. So I denoted that shape. Uh, fairly quickly and you can see I denoted the shape of the tree behind it with an orange that's the orange hue I'm talking about um, and this orange hue and the yellow hues that I'm putting down right now will play like a really interesting part in the illustration later on um, which I'll explain in a second but anyways um so yeah I'm just slowly building up this illustration shape wise you know denoting all the shapes uh, and just kind of marking where things are um, I added the fence I modified the fence I'm pretty sure that I did um, but that's what that brown is at the bottom left and obviously I'm adding the roads and I made the conscious decision to just take out that silver gate just to kind of have a flow going towards the middle of the image. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'll just slowly build things up by, you know, doing all the shapes. Now, what is interesting about this process is that, you know, I was very heavily dependent on brush and like, using the brush tip basically um, in digital painting you can use a brush tip as sort of a stamp to kind of indicate details and this is why this illustration is interesting and it was you know done very fast and very quick like I said it was done in 30 minutes which is one of my faster photo studies and the reason why was because after I did all the basic shapes, which you've seen me finish with the basic shapes, I just pretty much just started stamping all the details. So like one of the details I use is this um, uh, grass brush, you know, like you can see me just pretty much just stamp that detail out. Like I didn't really do any of the brushes or I didn't really... I do any of the grasses you know and paint the grasses by hand instead I use this uh, very unique tool uh, to digital painting 
you know, the brush tip, just using the brush tip just to kind of denote details. And this is pretty much just what I did all throughout the illustration, just repeatedly. You can see me grab some leaves uh, and use that for the tree in the foreground. So that's what I'm doing right now, uh, just kind of denoting things. And I just pretty much just rinse and repeated this and slowly build this up um, so that I could um, quickly add details to the illustration. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing in the next few minutes.
So as you can see, um, it's really quick and easy to build up the details by using uh, the brush tip on your digital brushes. Um, and you can see that I populated some details in the foreground like really fast, really quick, like a minute or two. And like now I'm just going back and enhancing it with a different brush, basically, you know, just adding in more of those grasses. Um, I try to differentiate the hues a little, you know, just to kind of vary it up, basically. But you could pretty much tell that the trees and the grasses and pretty much a lot of the foliage in the foreground is for the most part done, you know, just a little bit refining here and there. Uh, so yeah, it's quickly made. The background, for the most part, is pretty much done. Um, as you can see, the only thing that I detailed uh, is that house uh, in between the orange and the yellow hues. Um, I kind of define it because I kept reading the shape fairly easy because um, it has like a contrast, high contrast. Be uh, with the fog around it, you know, the fog being white and like that house being like a dark figure. I figured it was such an easy read that I had to put it in. And so that's what I did. Um, so the background was done very quickly and detailed. However, I didn't do the trees. You could see that, you know, I put down some markings for the yellow and the orange just to indicate that there's trees there. That was like my whole intention for for those hues, right? And for some odd reason, I decided to just not detail it. You know, I'm like, I'm just going to leave it as is. I mean, it kind of creates interesting shapes. Or maybe I would, just wasn't paying it enough attention to it, you know, because um, I decided to work on the foreground. And the thing with the background is that you could really get away with a lot of of noise and lack of details in the background because it's in the background and most people don't pay attention to it so that's probably what was going through my subconscious or my conscious head where it was just like well it's the background so i don't really need to detail it as much let me just concentrate on the foreground for now and then maybe i'll go back to the background and detail those trees you know maybe that's what i was thinking at this point i'm not too sure yet um but What's interesting about those hues that I put down to kind of indicate there's trees there, um, they ended up looking like fire for me. Um, after I added Slenderman to the illustration, that's what I meant about what's so interesting about this image. Because, you know, if you look at the original image, I mean, no offense to Map Crunch. But it's not the most interesting image. And I don't even know why I decided to do a photo study on this image because this is not the most interesting environment to be had from MapCrunch. So, I mean, there's other interesting images that you could generate from MapCrunch. So I don't know why I chose this one. Um, I think it might have something to do with the fog, you know, because I thought it was intriguing. So I decided to, you know, run with it. Anyways, my whole point was, like I said, it was just supposed to be a simple photo study. That's all I had initially intended up until the moment I added Slenderman. And when I added Slenderman, I was like, oh, cool. And then I looked behind Slenderman and I was like, oh, wow, that looked like fire, you know? And so it was just one of those like really odd things that happen in artwork sometimes where you... You know, me as an artist, I kind of intended for something else and then something else happens and you're just like, oh, wow, okay, I'll just run with that, you know. So basically, that's the reason why I chose this out of all the hundreds of, of paintings I do on a regular basis. I have so much artwork in my hard drive. It's not even funny how much artwork I have in my hard drive. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's probably the reason why I decided to choose this to make a video out of because even though it's not my best illustration and not, you know, the most intriguing illustration I've ever done, it has 
that magic quality that happens in art sometimes where you make a mistake and you run with that mistake and you're just like wow this mistake is awesome that's pretty much just what happened you know i mean just like what bob ross said you know there are no accidents there's only uh what was that quote again i forgot what that quote was um happy accidents or something um now I'm curious as to what that quote is. So I'm going to look at the Bob Ross accident quote. What is that quote? Happy accident. Yeah. Um, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. That's what he typically says. So that's what happened to this one. You know, um, it was just a happy little accident that happened and you know i was wrong i thought it was the last five minutes that i added slenderman but it turns out i'm adding him now so it was like the last 10 minutes and here's another interesting fact about this i don't know why i ended up drawing slenderman i knew i wanted to add a figure after all was said and done right um i decided that i'm gonna add a figure but i think how i ended up with slenderman was a happy little accident by itself too a mistake i i think i couldn't gauge what the size is you know because if you look at the original image that gate in front uh that i decided to take out is pretty huge i mean you know so i was sitting there thinking that proportion wise a regular size human would be as tall as what i had indicated in my initial mark when i made that mark that first black mark i'm like okay i think a person needs to be this tall right so i made that mark just thinking that it was just going to be a regular person but somehow i made that mark way too skinny and then i just ended up running with the skinny mark <laughs> instead of fattening up that mark to just indicate like a normal person all of a sudden you know this skinny mark became a much taller person you know because of like a perspective warping basically is pretty much just what happened since there's you know no good indication as to how tall a regular person would be compared to the fence and the gate since there are no person in the original image then it's really just hard to indicate you know how big things are but as you can see, you know, I ended up drawing Slenderman and instead of just a regular figure, I ended up drawing something a wee bit taller than I had intended. And so, yeah, here I am doing another creepy illustration for August, which I didn't intend to do. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's interesting, though, you know, all this happy little accidents in all coming together for me to create this immensely intriguing narrative in this painting.
So this illustration is pretty close to getting finished. Um, I'm pretty much just refining things. So yeah. Um, but yeah, um, just to go over back, or just go over back, just to go over real quick on my thoughts about this piece. Um, again, like I said, it's interesting because I have way too many happy little accidents in this image. Um, the orange and the yellow hues are now very interesting because they look like fire now like i said they were originally intended to be trees but now they're fire um cost by slenderman that i added out of nowhere um slenderman was supposed to be just a regular figure but i misjudged the height and whatnot and so now it's you know the figure has become slenderman and then the fog, which I was initially studying, has now become smoke from the fire. So yeah, there's all this pyro scene going on that I didn't intend to have as my narrative. It was just supposed to be a regular figure walking down a path in a photo study. But now, now it's a creepy, creepy Slender Man story. So yeah, but I love it, you know. And again, like I said, not my best illustration, you know, not typically done in the fashion that I typically do things. Um, so, yeah, and this is the reason why this uh, process is interesting, because, you know, I mix and match my processes every now and then, you know, just to kind of experiment and figure things out and see which ones I like best. And so, yeah. Uh, Clearly, this is another technique that people can use, you know. Um, it's not a technique that I technically use often, but pros do use this a lot to help prototype uh, illustrations quicker. So, yeah. But, yep, yeah, I'm just doing my final touches, kind of just refining all the details. Um, I think at this point, I was happy with the photo. Um and I probably was really glad that it went by real fast and real quick than I initially expected. But yeah, that's the end of the illustration. Thank you guys for watching it with me. Uh, like and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Good night.